You know it's only a matter of time before you buy one of these yourself, for no reason other than to finally figure out how many watts that red standby light on your TV is using. I'm just that little bit ahead of you because I've got mine already, and I spent many happy hours the other day plugging stuff in and measuring how much power I was consuming. Let's start with simple stuff you'll find around the house, going from lowest to highest power consumption. The lowest I found was my toothbrush charger, which seemed to consume just 0.6 watts of power, and it's probably why it takes a whole night to charge this thing. Still, it's not something I'll worry about leaving plugged in all the time. Next was my bedside light, which has three different brightness settings. All of them are dim, but some are more so than others. And when on, it consumed somewhere between 1 and 5 watts of power, which I expected to be the case. But it was still fun to see the power consumption jump up as the brightness setting increased. My phone's charging is rated at 30 watts, the charger I used 65 watts, but in practice it only consumed 10 to 15 watts of power, no matter which settings I activated or disabled. Now we jump up to the clothes dryer I use. I love myself a washing line, but I live in England, and so I have a room set up with a drying rack and a dehumidifier. The dehumidifier uses 150 watts in use, and the drying rack, when turned on and heated, 250. Now electric dryers use between 1800 and 5000 watts, so I've got to weigh that up against my setup, which is about 400 watts an hour, and it probably takes about 12 hours to dry stuff, so 5000 watts. Not as efficient as I'd have liked, so maybe I should get a dryer. Or just wait until summer to dry all my clothes. Or just don't wash them at all. Next, I tested my 700 watt microwave to see how many watts this 700 watt microwave uses when running at full 700 watt power. <laughs> 1270, apparently. The air fryer is next, being the cheaper alternative to an oven, which on average can consume about 1500 watts of power in use. My air fryer saves a massive 25 watts by consuming just 1475 instead. But maybe it's more power efficient because it cooks things faster than an oven would. Or as this one does, burns one side and leaves the other side soggy, no matter how many times I turn the food over. Hairdryer versus kettle. Which consumes the most power? Well, the hairdryer had three settings. The lowest was 1000 watts, the middle was 1600, and the one you'd actually use, 2050-ish. Meanwhile, the kettle was the most power demanding thing in the entire house at a stonking 3000 watts. I have expected it to explode in my face right there and then. Remember that this is a British kettle and not one of the slower American types, so yours might consume less. Not that I use a kettle anymore because I now have a boiling water tap, which is apparently more efficient because it has a tank of always boiled water that maintains its temperature every couple of minutes. I don't know about its efficiency, but I like it because it makes using the tap a truly terrifying experience. Now for the more complicated thingies. Screens were the most surprising for me. This 24-inch high refresh rate gaming monitor consumed about 24 watts in use. That was for 60 hertz. It rose to 26 watts for 144 hertz and 28 watts for 180 hertz. Great returns on investment there. High refresh rates consumed more, but only a little bit more, and I'd say those few watts go a long way towards improving your gaming experience. So don't be afraid to ramp those refresh rates up. Meanwhile, this massive 60 hertz, 75 inch TV was about 150 watts in use, which again, given the immense surface area it's lighting up, seems kind of reasonable. The surprise came from the standby power consumption, which was sometimes something super low like 0.3 watts, but other times as high as 12 or 13 for my gaming monitor and up to 20 for the TV. And I'm not sure what caused this. It seemed like manually turning them off would more consistently drop them to the correct 0.3 watts of power. So I'm going to say that when in standby mode, a screen shouldn't consume power, but it might. Either way, I can no longer trust screens in standby mode and must now turn them off at the mains, just to be sure. Thanks a bunch, what a meter. But the confusion of screens was nothing compared with this laptop, which has left me more confused than I was even before I started. And believe me, I started confused. Take its processor, for instance. An Intel i7-1260P is rated at 28 watts, but it doesn't have to consume as much as that if it doesn't need to. But also, it may momentarily use more than that when required, and also because it's Intel. So yeah, this 28 watt figure is just, it's just there. So you know already that wattage readings for this laptop are going to be a mess. Laptop off, but plugged in, it consumed one watt of power, which doesn't seem like it's charging, but it's also quite a lot if it isn't. Anyway, I turned it on, waited for it to all load up and to idle on the desktop, where it consumed about 10 watts of power with occasional spikes to about 50. What are you doing, computer? While I expected fluctuations in power consumption, I didn't expect such wild or frequent ones. I tried turning the OLED screen brightness all the way down and all the way up again, and 
it made no difference. Clearly it is, but it wasn't showing in the readings. I'm going to assume that because it has a battery, the laptop has a hard time deciding whether it wants to use that or the mains power, and so it ends up being inconsistent and weird about it. Because I know for a fact that the battery drops much faster when the screen is on full brightness, because obviously it will do. So it has to be consuming a lot more power when the screen is on full brightness. In short, from all my testing, I've gathered that it's really hard to read laptop power consumption from its mains power draw. Also, because it's plugged in, it may choose less power efficient settings than were it on battery mode only. It's just then I can't read how much power it's consuming, can I? Anyway, once I started doing things with the laptop, it got easier to measure it. Watching a movie consumed about 24 watts of power, downloading games on Steam consumed about 50, and a graphically intensive benchmark like 3D Mark was 70? Do note that this laptop has the worst of both worlds, where it has a dedicated graphics card, but one that's kind of rubbish. Why did I get this laptop? I got it for this screen so I could play Heroes 3 every night sitting in bed like this, and it's been worth every penny. God, I love that game. But yeah, of all the results, I think the Steam download wattage is the most interesting one, because I've long known it to be much more processor demanding than you might have expected, as it's not just downloading stuff, it's also extracting compressed data as it's going, which can take a really big bite out of your processor's resources, especially if you have a fast internet connection. Next, I tested this mini PC to see how it fared. I hoped it would consume less power than the laptop did, but also as it's a desktop PC, I figured it might be less concerned about power efficiency. Either way, knowing how much it's consuming will be interesting, because unlike the laptop's 28 watt processor, this one's rated at just 6 watts. But again, I suspected that that could be a lie. And sure enough, at 8 watts idle and 25 watts peak usage, I feel like the processor must be a bit more than 6, maybe as much as 15. And then of course the rest of the components are doing stuff as well. But how about that? A mini PC can consume far less power than even a regular old laptop does. And last, I tested my main PC setup. The screen itself is a hyper-indulgent 32-inch 144Hz 4K HDR 1400 display. In simple terms, it nom noms big power. In wattage terms, it wasn't actually as bad as I expected. As usual, I found a weird quirk with the standby mode where it would consume 26 watts of power if the fan was still running even when the screen was off. Yup, this screen has a fan in it to cool its G-Sync thingy in the back, and it often spins for about a minute after you've switched the PC off. When the screen was on, however, in standard mode at 40 to 80 watts, I didn't actually think it was too bad, and this wattage depended on whether the screen was black or white. And finally, as a special treat, I turned HDR on and put on that really exciting bit in Interstellar where they're docking over that blindingly white planet. And I can confidently say that Interstellar's music can make even staring at this wattage meter an exciting experience and my screen, when displaying this scene at peak HDR brightness, consumed up to 200 watts of power, though still 40 to 80 most of the time. So actually this screen isn't as bad as I had anticipated, but it does mean that this monitor can briefly consume more power than this TV that's almost six times the size. Yeesh. But all that power consumption is nothing compared to my main PC. Here are the specs. If you don't know your PCs, this will mean nothing to you, but if you do, you're probably a bit mortified right now. For comparison, a PlayStation 5 can consume 200 watts of power, but in my PC, the processor alone can consume about double that, and the GeForce 4090 more than double that. Add the other stuff you find in a PC as well, and you're talking lots of power, and not necessarily in a good way. But I have a secret. Back in the day, you used to be able to overclock your processor to get more performance out of it. These days, processors overclock themselves to some extent. The AM4 standard max out at around 100 watts, AM5 200. Well, with Intel these days, you think it's at a limit, and then they release a newer processor that goes even higher again. Some of them now hit like 300 or 400 watts. It's all to squeeze out an extra percent or so out of the performance, but at such a terrible cost of power efficiency that it's all but essential that you underclock these to a level that you can cool effectively. So I've set my power limits a lot lower. I still get most of the performance, but at less than half the original power consumption. When sitting on desktop on my main PC, the PC was still consuming 90 watts of power. Now I don't know what's eating that. I guess it's all just par for the course for a PC full of full-size, high-performance parts. Please don't explode. I then put a video render on and my PC consumed about 285 watts of power, which is more than I would have liked it to consume. I was expecting maybe about half of that. It's not unusual for me to go full days with my PC on in this state, which is roughly the equivalent of leaving a kettle on for two and a half hours a day, or the microwave for about five and a half hours. And that's even with me trying to make my PC more power efficient. Loading up a game like Counter-Strike 2, its power consumption jumped to about 300 to 400 watts. 
which again was a lot more than I expected it to be, given that the frame rate was capped to 144Hz at 4K, so it shouldn't be stressing any of my computer's components. Just as a reminder, my PC is consuming about twice the power that a PlayStation 5 would, but we can go further still. I jumped into my BIOS and removed all of the power limits. That video encoding that used to consume 280 watts would now jump between 300 and nearly 500 watts of power, and that's just with my processor running, the graphics card isn't even doing anything yet. And so finally, I put my PC to the ultimate test. I loaded up Cyberpunk 4K with maximum path tracing. A true challenge for any PC, and just for good measure, I ran two video encodes at the same time in the background. I'm actually scared. And what ensued was the most terrifying minute of my year so far, as my PC alone spiked between 750 and nearly 900 watts of power. Add to that my nearly 200 watt screen, and we're talking almost the power of a microwave, simply to entertain you for this video. Am I the sort of person to care about power consumption? Yes, because I pay for it, and because I live in England where electricity is really expensive. But I also care about it because I do hate waste. Even this minute I spent stress testing my PC felt so incredibly wasteful. Yeah, that's nothing compared with the decades I've been using PCs for already, and the thousands of hours I've left them idle for, blissfully unaware of just how much power they're consuming. These days, there are alternatives. I could be getting by on my mini PC most of the time, or playing most games with a 30 watt Steam Deck, or I could just be using a 200 watt console instead. Yet here I am, right on the cutting edge where I like to be, but I'm paying the price for it in just about every way imaginable. And to think, it's just as well I upgraded my power supply. For Path Trace to Cyberpunk with rendering in the background, maybe I can justify this display of excess once in a while. But now that I'm armed with the data, I am going to go to efforts to try and be more energy conscious, and to start using my hardware in greener and more sustainable ways. And the first sacrifice I'm going to make is to start playing a lot more Heroes 3 in bed.